Hello everyone. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to my room. It's Ren here. Um, I'm going to start a new typological series which will be focused on the 16 types, the 16 main types um, of the Myers-Briggs categories um, on the basis of the type functionalist uh, model that I have developed and articulated in previous videos. So I refer to you to um, prior videos that I made to recently to uh, get a clear idea of, of where I'm going with this and maybe with some of the terminology associated if you feel a bit lost in what I'm going to be talking about in this video because in this video I'm going to be zeroing in on the INFP. So the INFP is kind of like the guinea pig for this model when it comes to giving concrete practical examples of how this model can be applied and, and to an extent how easy this model is to manipulate and handle once you understand the fundamentals and that I see this as one of its greatest advantages. I like the INFP very much. It's one of my favorite types. I confess to having a certain kind of soft spot for it partly because my granddad was one and my brother is one and you know I love them both. Um, but in any case, let's go. Okay, so the INFP. In order to analyze this type, we're first going to be looking at what their cognitive function stack is. Now, the cognitive function stack of the INFP is F-I-N-E-S-I-T-E. -E. So the dominant is the uh, function of introverted feeling. The auxiliary is the function of extroverted intuition. Tertiary is the introverted sensing and Inferior is extroverted thinking. Now, so far, so good. Now, now that we have this simple stack in mind, right? No need to worry about the shadow functions. We're just focusing on the main stack. Let's see what type functionalism has to say about it. Um, well, as you remember from my previous videos, type functionalism divides the functions in two main categories, which are further subdivided into two subcategories. So on the side of perception, you have the gathering of the extroverted perceiving functions and the processing of the introverted perceiving functions. And then on the side of judgments, you have the deliberating of the introverted judging functions and then the justifying the justification of the extroverted judging functions. Okay, well, now we have a type and we have its, its function stack, right? So again, F-I-N-E-S-I-T-E. -E. That fits quite well into our model. To start with, we, we can literally plug it into our model. So we know that on the for the INFP on the perception side, we're going to have extroverted intuition as the first link in the chain. Second link in the chain, logically speaking, is introverted sensing. Then moving on to perception, sec so the third link here is introverted feeling. Fourth link is extroverted thinking. So that's kind of how the function stack of the INFP has been plugged into our model. So now, how can we tell apart then an INFP from say, um, what would be a good example? Well, <laughs> maybe an, an ISTJ, for example, right? Because you're gonna say, well, ISTJs have the exact same plugin in a sense, you know, they have, extroverted intuition, they have introverted sensing on the perception side, and then on the judgment side, they also have introverted feeling and extroverted thinking, All right? So clearly we need something else to, to, to get to a fuller analysis of the INFP, and in such a way that when we move on to analysis of the ISTJ, we can, we can really tell apart the differences. Well, as you might have guessed, here the main difference is going to be a difference of conscious views. And this comes from Jung. Some, some modern typology models resist the idea that the functions of a person in a, in, a, in a cognitive function stack are differentiated according to how conscious they are in a person's daily life. Um, there are merits to these approaches. I think that from the perspective of my model, very clearly, we are going to stick to the Jungian idea that the higher your function is in the stack, the more conscious it is. So to look at our INFP again, what are we gonna see? 
We're going to see that the first link in the chain, extroverted intuition, is quite conscious because it's auxiliary. Second link in the chain, introvert sensing, not as conscious as extroverted intuition, but conscious a fair bit of the time, right? Introverted sensing, tertiary. And the judgment side, introverted feeling is going to be the most conscious, indeed, almost un unlimitedly conscious. And finally, the last thing can kind of chain, in a certain sense, the weak point of the INFP is extroverted thinking, which is predominantly unconscious. Now, so now that we've said this, what is interesting to kind of analyze from this? Well, what is interesting to analyze is that the INFP is a type whose gathering of data in the external world via extrovert intuition is quite conscious. That explains their bubbly creativity, which is easy to see quite directly, whether it is in conversation with them, in their writing, in YouTube videos, where you get all these sorts of debates about why are INFPs so often confused with ENFPs and the reverse. To a large extent, this is because the first link in the chain, extroverted intuition, the gathering, which is so visible, because it's the first move toward the external world, is conscious. The INFP has a lot of influence over it and it's quite clear that they're at ease there, okay? So that's good. Now, introverted sensing is the processing of the bubbliness. It's somewhat conscious, but it's not completely conscious. It's tertiary. So what we're gonna get here is a processing second link in the chain that when it is conscious works quite well in taking the insights taking the the the, the sort of wavy chaotic bits of data provided by an extra intuition and making them more rigid but the infp is only partly conscious of it when he's conscious of it he will be able to distill the essence of those particular insights into a pre-established model of their experience. Often SI is associated with a function of memory, but it's not completely correct. Memory is only one instantiation of, the, of this kind of static model of experience. This, the stasis is linked to a sensory function, whether it be in gathering with SC or in uh, processing with SI. But with SI, what you have is, is static processing, so the intuition is sort of put into neat categories that are already existent because they're kind of the core of the INFP's experience, okay? But that's not done completely consciously, which is why, now, you see this less than in the case of the ENFP, but you will see it's more probably in the, than in the case of the... Uh, well, for example, in the case of the ISTJ, is that the INFP is still going to struggle to completely process the information that the gathering of extrovert intuition has done. What, what that means is that when it comes to the next link in the chain, we start, we are, we're now in the domain of judgment. Introvert feeling, very conscious, wants to constantly check that the information that is freed up for it fits with the, their sense of authenticity to the, the values that are undergirding the beliefs. So they have INFPs, like any other type, have a dense layer upon layer of web of beliefs. It's very important to the INFP that the, the beliefs cohere, or maybe I should not be say cohere because I use that for introverted thinking, but are aligned with the values. INFPs are highly conscious of their introverted feeling function, so they're highly conscious of their values. They're going to want to make sure that whatever piece of information they try to make sense of is aligned with their values. It's very important. Like INTJs do the same thing, ISTJs also, ENTJs also, but in the case of the INFPs, this is what they specialize in. This is what is so important to them. But because introverted sensing, the, the processing is not as conscious, it's a bit more unreliable. So what's going to happen is that INFPs, and again, it's, it's worse in the case of the ENFP, are going to gather a lot of stuff 
that they're not completely going to be able to process for the purpose of introverted judgments and since uh, introverted judgments yeah introverted feeling in this case so what you get and from the perspective of a j type this is particularly striking is that INFPs are going to gather a lot of information, it's going to be very bubbly, it's going to be very dynamic, it's going to be very lateral, but then there's a lot of it that just doesn't seem to make its way into processing, it just seems to be there. And now, for a type like the ISTJ that specializes in processing, which in a sense means that the gathering, none of the gathering is done for nothing, it's always going to be processed, no bit of information is going to be left to just go back into the void or into the mass of the chaotic you know, clouds, it's going to be frustrating to see an INFP that just uh, accesses all this information but leaves half of it out because its processing is not conscious. So they don't have as much control over it. Now, nevertheless, what, what does manage to make its way into the, the, the realm, the next logical realm of, of introverted judgment is going to be really, really, really intensely analyzed deliberated from the point of view of authenticity to the values, which is going to give whatever insights are in fact processed correctly, a lot of depth of value. So that's the strength of the INF, INFP ZFI. Now, it's not quite over. We still have to get to the last link in the chain prior to action. Extroverted thinking, the, the justifying of the INFP. Uh, that's tough for the INFP, uh, <clears throat> because extroverted thinking is mostly unconscious. So what that means is that <clears throat> those conclusions they reach internally, which are very profound, very deep, and whose alignments with their values have been carefully, carefully confirmed, carefully deliberated, carefully investigated, now, they're very sure of those. It's very much more challenging for them to justify this against the order of the external world. And because we're talking about the TE function, we're talking about an objective function in, in the literal sense. So <clears throat> it has to do with the world of objects, not the world of subjects of other subjects, like in the case of the INFJ or any FE user. And that's significant and something that a lot of people don't appreciate enough is that the domain of justification of their conclusions for the INFP in the realm of judgment is not the domain of other people. It's actually the domain of objects. But unlike the ENTJ and the ESTJ, who are virtuoso at fitting their conclusions with the domain of objects, similarly more or less for ISTJs and INTJs, that can be understood because again their TE is quite conscious. In the case of the INFP, it's really not their strong point. And so there's going to be a tendency to, to, to remain stranded at the level of introverted feeling. And this is the reason why a lot of the time people think that the reasoning of the INFP ends with introverted feeling. It doesn't end with introverted feeling. In fact, the INFP is never more satisfied than when their introverted feeling based conclusions have been validated have been vindicated against the order of the external world it's just not that easy to accomplish because the extroverted thinking is not that conscious but it can certainly be accomplished to give you one example jean-jacques rousseau you might have heard of him he's a french philosopher in fact he's not a french philosopher he's a french-speaking philosopher but swiss in nationality wrote a social contract somewhere around the late 18th century now, he's universally seen as an INFP, Rousseau is. He managed to create a system where his internal values were vindicated against the order of the external worlds. And he did this via the concept of the social contract. And the social contract is influential everywhere nowadays. It influenced Kant, it influenced a whole generation of philosophers, lawyers, and, and it made its way into the concept of democracy today. Now, this was a typical example of an INFP managing to bring his authentic values aligned with his conclusions to justify the, the external validity of those conclusions on the basis of the external world. Russo, in the political realm of his time, now the social contract was not the case. He was living, he had to deal with absolute monarchies, but he managed to present the idea of the social contract as a legitimate as a logically acceptable, a logically reasonable addition to that external world. 
And you know, the social contract is an object in some sense. It's an abstract object, but it is an object. And it became accepted over time. And so in this case, we have a great example of a 9FG, uh, 9FP managing to redeem his FI-oriented conclusions, the conclusions of his internal deliberation, vindicating against the external world and proving to have a massive influence. So INFPs do, do this a lot. Well-known INFPs do this a lot by means of books. This would take us a bit further away uh, in our investigation, so I'll stop here. But I hope to have shown you that the model can be applied to kind of investigate really any type. And I am, in principle at least, uh, focused and, and serious about the idea of applying the model to the 16 types and see if we can clarify every type in this manner by not making use of any fanciful or highfalutin concept that's very vague and hard, you know, has blurry boundaries, just sticking to the four tasks, processing, gathering, deliberating, justifying. See you guys and let me know what you think and if you thought that was interesting. Bye.